So let's solve the same problem now that we solved with the SMG, uh, but with Python and the Z3 Python bindings that I was talking about. So the Python bindings are very good documented in the Python uh, web pages of it. So as you can see here, there is the z 3 proverbgithubio documenting the whole API and everything that it's available under the z 3 pi You have all the data structures and functions, the variables, and in the end, you also have the function documentation where you can see like use cases and how it looks like and the implementation of the function itself. What is pretty useful sometimes if you don't know what you were doing. <laughs> and uh, you have a link here directly from your VM. And we can install uh, the Python bindings for Z3 with pp install Z3 server. I always recommend having a virtual environment or something separated for Z3 and for SMT. Uh, this VM is just for it, so I'm not having it here, but it's something to keep in mind. So with control enter, you actually just run anything that it's inside the cell. So try it and see if you can install the Z3 solver into your machine. If everything goes well, we can see already here the isnet that we already solved using SMG language. And again, I have a small um, a skeleton here, but we are going to do it together. As always, if you prefer doing it by yourself, please do so and just press pause right now and come back if you want to review or see another ways of doing it. You can also just join us back again or keep listening and we are going to walk through this challenge. So first of all, we need to set up the environment and import the Python bindings, right? Uh, the best way of doing it is with the from Z3 import all. And every time we do this, we need to remember that we need to create a solver because Python is not the solver itself. It's just a binding, so we always need to create a solver. So let's do that. So again, as before, we need to declare the variables that we have in our uh, assembly code. So here we can declare everything we want. In the case of the AX input, we need to use like the Z3 bit vector. We give a name for it like we did before in SMT and we need the size exactly like before. So Doing it for ECXN should be trivial. So it's again z3.bitfact. And then we need to give a name for it. And let's use ECXN again. So it's consistent. And then we add the size 32. For the good parts of the Python is that you can also create lists and split all the, and create multiple variables in one line of code. Like this way, I like to create it per register. So I, I know how many states I have for each register and I can just keep adding it together. So here I have it for AX. As we know from the SMT solution, we need like another two EDX registers. So that's what we are going to do. And the difference here is just the S. So we are not creating one bit vector, we are creating more bit vectors. And that's all. And we can create the EDX1 and the EDX2. And both of them are going to be 32 bit. So control enter, and that's it. So we keep rolling. And now what you need to do is to model the problem. Uh, as you can remember from the past video and exercise, what we did was to create somehow an end connection between different constraints. And that's basically the model. We are creating here the same five lines of code. And with the double equal, we are asserting that it's equal 
So it, that's also a way to say that it's an assertion and we are connecting it with a column and which means that they are end connected. All of them need to be the same. So we have the first one that it was an ad. So we can actually use an, an, an ad symbol. With the shift is the same. We can also uh, use the shift left. And for this, we need to have a bit vector value from CX. If you remember, you can create it also in Python, just using the value append uh, here. And then you have the value and the size again, creating a bit vector bit vector of value 12 of 32 uh, bit size. And then the third one was the multiplication. As we know assembly, we know that we need to take the AX2, that it was the value of AX right before this instruction. And we have multiplied by the ASX, that it's still the input. And then we connect it with the column. And then we have EDX1. EDX1 needed to be, it was the move. So we want to assert that it's equals to AX right before AX3. And then the last one was the XOR. So we can use the XOR symbol. And then we have the EDX1 sword with a CX input. And that's how we model the problem. It's very simple. It's just a list of assertions in Python. Then we get to the next one. And to add this model to the solver, because right now you just define it, but we still need to add it to our solver. So we can just do as add model, and it's going to add all the constraints that we have in this list. We could also have a solver add and then each of these single lines are being added to the solver. That would also work. But I like to keep it like clean. And that's why I define the problem like this. And then I add constraints separated when it makes sense, when I'm really constraining my output. So, and as before, the first thing that we need to do is to check if there is a solution. So, there is a function that is the check set in Python that it's the check, so we can call it from this from the solver, and the answer or the re return is going to be a Z3 set or a Z3 unset. The only thing that I do here is like if you cannot find a solution, just quit because uh, I like to know that it it has a solution before running any kind of more complex code. So it didn't quit and didn't print. So we are fine. We probably have a solution. So what we are going to do now is we can also like print or check just to be sure, like just adding it here, like this. And you can see that our S check is returning set. Uh, so let's keep adding the constraints like before. So I, I like to give a name for each constraint just because, but then I say you can just like copy paste this part here. So my next requirement or constraint is like that EDX2, now it's like a, a, a bit vector of value 100 hex. So I'm adding that requirement to my server, but you can add anything you want. And then I again check for a solution. And if I have a solution this time, I'm going to have three values, the M, the AX value and the SX value. Because now I'm giving the end value and I, know, I want to know the input that it will get me to this output. That's something that we do a lot while fuzzing and like when you actually find a bug and you need to know which kind of input is going to trigger that bug. That's the kind of thing that we do. We set the output for the bug and we try to find out which conditions do we have for the input to actually trigger that path. And that's what we are going to do. So to find that, 
Uh, we have here the S check. Again, this time we want to be sure that we get a solution. And to get the model, we have the model that's the same as the get model that we had before in the SMG path or in the SMG solution. And to get the AIX value from this, we need to call it from the model. So we, we have a model and in this model, we know that our input for the EAX was called EAXN because that was the name that we gave to it. And as we know, it's going to be bytes, so we can just print it as long. And the same we can do for the ECX value. We also want to know the import value. Just that it looks nice. And then I just have a preprint here. So let's see if we have a solution. And as you can see, um, we found a solution where the EDX2 value, that means the end of our five instructions, is going to be 100 hex in a, uh, as a bit factor. And this solution would be if we started AX with like FFF00 and with XX, ECX uh, like 100 hex. Uh, if we have some kind of requirement that it's like at something that turns the solution feasible, then we just would print, cannot solve it. So what's interesting about like using Python instead of the Z3, since we could do that in Z3 already, so it's nothing new, it's the part of the iteration. As I was talking with you all before, once you find one kind of solution, but it's not the solution that you want to have. Sometimes you just want to automate that kind of uh, restriction. And that's what you can do very easily with Python. Uh, and that's why the Python bindings or the C bindings are the preferred way because you can automate this kind of things. So we can do it together. I will show you how I normally do this kind of simple automation, but in a very verbose way. And then you can just get the idea and try it yourself. So normally this kind of iterations, you just have like a, some kind of wire through. In our case, we are just interested as long as we have some kind of uh, feasible uh, solution. So that's my, my, that's my condition for my wire. And again, Every time when I, when I have a new solution, it means I have a model. So I need to retrieve that model every single time so I can retrieve all the information from my execution. And again, my EAX val, I already know how to retrieve that. Uh, I will use like just an int here because uh, I'm abusing the Python F string. So we are going to get the input and the output uh, and the, from EAX and from S6. As you already noticed from me, I am the laziest person, so I'm just copy pasting. But basically what we are doing, we are storing the value that we found just like before for a X input and a C X input that gets us to that solution. And this year we are going to use this information to update our requirements. So we are going to create like a requirement, requirement for a X that it is basically that a X n should not be the, the one that we just got, because we already know that one, right? Basically this. And the same we are going to do for ACX. So we are going to have a new requirement for ACX. That means that ACX is not the same value that we just got, because that one we already know. 
and we are going to add this requirement to our server. And the same we do for the ACX. So we have both of them. And now what we want to do is also keep a track of all the possible solutions that you are going to find. So that's why I created this list with the AXN and ACX thing that we found before. So that's the first one. And I'm going to append on my list the neo ones that I just found right now that it's AX in and in a C X in. And because I like to see stuff, I can just print. Something similar like before, I create a f string, and I have that my ax is going to be something like the ax value that we found before, and I can format it a little bit, and then we have the xx and cx, and just like the same. So, and what I'm going to do is just like break after 10 because we have a lot of possible solutions on this case. So, and what's happening now is like running it, we get a different, different possibilities. And what's happening is like uh, I'm adding tuples, like if SX keeps being 100, it's going to be this. But at some point, we don't have any more hundreds and then it's going to find the other sex. So I'm going to get all the possible uh, pairs of input that satisfy the output that I chose. And this way I know which kind of inputs for my program would trigger my bug, for example. 